Krill sensors make adding capacitive touch interactions to any project incredibly simple. You have a lot of different options with the different shapes like Trill Square or Trill Ring, which use the same sensing chip and processing, just with the sensor electrodes in different configurations. The Trill Craft is different from all the others in that it doesn't have pre-made electrodes, or at least it's designed expecting that you would add your own. This means you can break free from PCBs and work with other materials like conductive textiles or paper circuitry. However, it can be deceptively difficult to figure out the best way to connect a PCB, like the Trill Craft, with a flexible material, like paper or fabric. In this video, we'll go through one way you can build robust electrical connections between the Trill Craft PCB and an e-textile circuit to create a fabric breakout board. Let's sum up what we're going to do really quickly. We're going to use conductive thread to sew an electrical trace away from the Trillcraft PCB. We'll cover the ends of that sewn trace with a conductive fabric pad, and then place a press fit snap onto that fabric pad to provide a non-permanent electrical contact point so that we can attach and detach our Trillcraft from a larger touch interface. Now let's go through those steps in a bit more detail. You'll need a base fabric that isn't conductive to act as your substrate holding the whole circuit together. I like working with felt as you don't need to treat the cut edges at all to keep the fabric together. Choose whatever fits your project the best. You will need some conductive thread. Exactly which thread you use is not essential. You'll want a thread that is easy to handle when hand sewing without fraying too much, but is also not too rigid as you need to thread it onto a needle small enough to pass through the PCB electrode hole. I'm working with a polyester thread that has been nanoplated with silver with an electrical resistance of about 40 ohms per meter. It's approximately the same weight as an embroidery thread. You will also need some conductive fabric, but not very much of it. Only a square centimeter for each electrode you want to break out. It's a good idea to always keep all offcuts and scraps, as this is when they come in handy. I'm using a conductive ripstop fabric. We won't be sewing the conductive fabric, instead we'll be bonding it. Get some iron on adhesive but not iron-on interfacing. You just want the sheet of glue. You'll apply this to one side of your conductive fabric. I like to do this with a whole sheet of conductive fabric and then cut the fabric into the needed shapes later. The last of the haberdashery items are snaps. The 8mm mini snaps by Prim are the smallest diameter press fit snaps i found. You'll want to avoid sewn-on versions unless you really like to sit and spend too much time sewing on snaps and make sure you buy ones that are not coated, but are bare metal. It's always a good idea to do a continuity test with a multimeter to make sure the surface is conductive. And last, but certainly not least, you'll need a Trill Craft. It comes without any header soldered on, but does come with right angle headers you can solder onto the I2C connection of the board. If you plan to use these headers or solder on any other connector, do that first before you go any further. I've soldered on the right angle headers so that I can connect the Trill Craft to a Bella Mini. It's helpful to work out the layout of your fabric breakout board digitally. You can download the template used here from the link below and open it in Inkscape or Illustrator. You can also design your own starting with the footprint of the Trill Craft using the PCB files provided by Bella. Open them in KiCad and export any design to another image format. Print out your template and cut out where the fabric pads and the Trill Craft will be placed. Then using Taylor's chalk, trace the template onto your fabric. For this project, we'll only break out the first 15 electrodes, but there's nothing stopping you from adding the other 15 as well, or changing the layout. You may find an embroidery hoop to be helpful for the next part. I've used a pin to mark the number 7 electrode, as it is the first one I want to connect and it's not easy to keep count of the number of pads once the fabric is in the embroidery hoop. Start by using some embroidery thread to sew the Trill Craft into place. The mounting holes on the PCB work nicely for this. Then starting with your conductive thread and stitching from the pad location, stitch a running stitch with the thread from the pad to the PCB hole. Note that I'm not knotting anything, just holding the thread in place. I'm also starting the stitching from off-center within the pad. This is to accommodate the snap, which will later punch a hole directly in the center of the pad, and I want to keep my thread out of the way. When the stitches reach the PCB, go twice through the PCB hole. This is where a small eyed needle is helpful. 
and then return back to the pad following your stitched line. The end result looks like a back stitch, but it's just a running stitch doubled on itself. Don't knot the thread when you reach the end, just leave a long tail. It's a good idea to pause and check the electrical resistance. You want it to stay as low as possible to allow more sensitivity for the final touch sensor. This length of stitching is about 2 ohms, which is good and low. The double stitching is helping us keep it low. It's providing some additional robustness to our system in case part of the thread fails, perhaps due to oxidation, but it also provides twice the conductive path than a single line of stitching would give us otherwise. Repeat this for each trace for each electrode. Take care to keep all the stitches neat and ensure the different traces do not have any electrical shorts between them. You could cover the exposed traces with fabric at this point if you wanted. I'd recommend bonding on fabric. This will slow any oxidation of the thread and stop any shorts from frays. We are now going to iron on the conductive fabric pads with the iron on adhesive already applied to one side of the conductive fabric. This will give us a broader electrical connection for our snaps to connect to the thread and will seal the ends of the thread in place so we don't have to deal with knots to end the stitching. Conductive thread never likes to stay knotted and it's best just never to ask it to. Always do a test swatch when working with new materials before committing to a larger project. So stitch a small swatch with your thread and iron on a piece of conductive fabric over the stitching to make sure a good electrical connection is made even through the iron on adhesive. Once you are convinced the materials all work together, iron on the centimeter squares where you marked out your template. Test with a multimeter that you've not created any shorts and that the resistance from the pad to the PCB remains low. For my breakout board, this is ranging between 2 and 10 ohms. The final step is to add the snaps. You can choose for your own design whether it makes sense for the stud or the socket to be on the breakout board, and whether you want it to be on the same side as the trill craft or underneath. For this project, I'm attaching the stud side of the snap on the bottom side of the breakout board. You should now have a trill craft mounted on a fabric breakout board that can easily snap into a larger project. Connect the Trill Craft to a processor like an Arduino or Bella. I've connected mine to a Bella Mini running the Trill example project called Craft Visual to see that I can successfully detect touch interactions. I can now move on to coding the interactions I would like to control. Check the other Bella videos for tips and tutorials on how to do this.